Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing Catherine Newman's book, No Shame in My Game, The Working Poor in the Inner City. I'll talk real briefly about the author, give an overview of what the book is, talk about what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, who I'd recommend the book to, and finish off with what I will be reading for next time. Catherine Newman is a provost at UM Amherst. She's written about a dozen or so nonfiction works. This book, No Shame in My Game, is from what I can tell her most famous work. Uh, she's also a professor at several schools in the area, including Harvard. Um, what this is, is her and a research team uh, embedded themselves for about two years in central Harlem in the mid-90s, so roughly 94 to 97, somewhere in that time frame. And she interviewed hundreds of people, uh, both employees, managers, and people who applied to but did not get uh, selected for jobs at what she refers to as Burger Barn which is a fast food restaurant. I believe it is uh, McDonald's most likely, but it's never called out as McDonald's. Um, but it's basically people who work these jobs for very, very low wages, most oftentimes minimum wages. And the book is really an exploration of why someone would choose this job to take it and why um, in the inner city, unlike in other parts of the country, like uh, more middle class and upper class areas, uh, these jobs are not really so much a stepping stone as basically something where people permanently get stuck in in, in the jobs there uh, making minimum wage and why that may be. And then she kind of finishes the book off talking about ways that maybe we could change that. And uh, yeah, that's overall the book. Uh, I found it was very, very well researched. I think that there was a lot of citations. She clearly did not only her own uh, in-depth personal research, but also cites hundreds of different sources to kind of paint an overall picture of why the unemployment rate in the in Harlem in New York City is so at this time was so high compared to the unemployment rate nationwide. Um, and ultimately, it kind of came down to jobs. There's just a lack of jobs in the area. So I think the number that she throws out is about two hundred thousand more people trying to find work than we're able to, so you have a mass shortage. And uh, also at the time, politically, there was a push to get people off of, of welfare and assistance. And in order to do that, uh, work requirements became more stringent. And she explains kind of in depth how that actually impacts and negatively impacts the work and lives of people who are working poor. So these are people who um, work 40 hours or work part-time but are not able to make uh, – a living, uh, I think it's one and a half or two times the poverty rate. Um, and so I think that that from a uh, 50,000 fit view is actually really interesting. To me, the, the most interesting, interesting parts of the story were when she went and interviewed personal people. She starts the book off by interviewing, I think, three individuals. And she kind of, as the book goes along, kind of drops their stories in to illustrate larger points, like the stigma of working at a McDonald's, like the difficulty it is in finding a pathway towards management, uh, the difficulty of juggling working in McDonald's and working and if you and getting adequate child care and health care and things of that nature. So I think from that point of view, it's kind of a very specific book that's kind of very much a product of its time. But I think a lot of the things it talks about um, are actually felt like precursors to other things that I've reviewed for the channel, like the coming of neo-feudalism. This book feels in some ways like uh, that book 20 years prior to it. It's not necessarily the same subject matter exactly, but a lot of the the warning signs are there in this book for things that are to come later. If there are some things that I didn't like about it, I think there was a focus uh, in certain parts, uh, the stigma chapter especially, that, that when she kind of talks about the stigma of working at a fast food restaurant for people who are uh, working poor people, uh, that chapter felt kind of bloated to me and it kind of kept going on and on and on. And I felt like there were, while that was definitely true, I didn't think that that was so true to the point that she had to uh, belabor the point as much as she did, that there is stigma that comes with the job uh, in part, because I think that that stigma is true for everybody who works there uh, at uh, no matter what economic status you are, it kind of is designed in a lot of ways even by the managers themselves, for it to be a stepping stone job. So there is amount of stigma there, and also not unlike other jobs like retail or any other job that where you're interacting so closely with the public. And then the other point of it that, that kind of irked me, 
she makes a point in the, the book to compare some of the research that she's done with Charles Murray and his co-author on The Bell Curve. I've never read The Bell Curve, but I, I understand the arguments. They make it pretty well. Um, and I don't think she takes on his argument fully. Uh, she kind of skates around or doesn't really address the effect of uh, child rearing, especially on really young mothers and fathers, but mostly mothers who are in their, their teens and early 20s. Um, there's one character specifically who is one of the three that she follows who has a child when he is 22. I think his his common-law wife was, I think if the book is correct, 16. Um, and they have a fairly difficult go of it. And she doesn't ever really address that choice in the difficulties of the people who are within in, to me, a full and honest way. And so I felt that that was something that was missing. And as in detailed in some of these things as she goes down, uh, there's a huge chapter on kind of family and how the family structure works in a lot of these households. She doesn't really address that adequately, in my opinion. But otherwise, I enjoyed the book. I think that, that there are definitely parts that I would have trimmed down. Um, but I think she does a good job of capturing what she's trying to capture. And I thought from a cultural standpoint, it's an interesting work. Um, if you like this or if you're interested in this, you may have also been interested in The Coming of Neo-Feudalism, which I mentioned before. Paying the Price, which I've reviewed for the channel as well, and another book, Unequal Childhoods, by, I, I unfortunately don't remember the author of that book in, right in front of me, but that's another book that this one reminded me of. So if you have read or are interested in any of those three books, I would definitely check out No Shame in My Game. And until next time, I will be reading uh, Noir by uh, Christopher Moore. Uh, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and follow me on Twitter. I'll leave the Twitter link below. Until next time, bye.